Yeah, hi, it's great to be back. Um, I'm going to talk about fittings today and reactors and um, just kind of give a brief hardware description of what, what we're talking about here. So the molten salt reactors are, they are you know, a containment fluid delivery system. They have both liquids and gases in them. And in order for these uh, fluid delivery systems to work well, they've got to have, there are some unique constraints. And um, so this fitting that we've talked about here is the way, kind of the fundamental way of connecting all these modular parts, like Ralph was talking about earlier, you want to have um, building these systems modularly, it's much more efficient. Um, so the, what are the characteristics of the fittings we have to use? We have to have fittings that are multi-mate, demate. We be able to take it apart, put it back together several times. We have to have torque elimination fittings. That means we don't get a lot of twist and wind up because that ends up causing problems down the line with uh, loosening and particles. We want to have uh, no loosening and no particles. So um, these are characteristics of a fitting in a molten salt reactor. So what are the characteristics of this reactor? Well, it's going to have a very wide temperature range. It's going to be from room temperature up to 1,100 degrees, so it's got a big temperature range. Um, here's a couple places where these fittings are being used now. The NIF reactor is the one on the, um, the left here. If I can see this. Okay, all right. And, um, <laughs> All right, good. And then the far right, I think that is the Oak Ridge National, the lab, um, the um, molten salt reactor in Oak Ridge. Um, so we also have to be able to deal with corrosive salts. And so the material of choice has been uh, Hastelloy N. And um, that's a, it's a good material. We use it in semiconductor industry also for corrosive applications. And then this is not a high pressure application, so it's not a big pressure vessel. But we do have to deal with neutron flux and radiation. So the materials of construction are this high nickel alloy called Hastelloy or Hastelloy N, one version of that. Um, so we have a question when we're building a reactor. Do we want to make it all welded or do we want to make it modular? And so these are the reasons that we've gone to modularity. Um, it gives us flexibility. It gives us the, the ability to do testing of subsystems. Um, it gives us to do uh, proximity welding. When we're doing um, construction of these reactors, we use orbital welding. So we have two tubes that are joined together by a kind of a C-shaped uh, electrode that goes down over the system and then rotates around it and welds the exterior of this component. Um, component replacement due to failure or upgrade. Obviously, if you have to cut the system apart, that's very dirty and very expensive. But if you can just take apart a fitting here and a fitting there and pull a whole subsystem out for repair, that makes things a lot easier. And we also talked about uh, maybe automatic tools that can go in there and remove fittings automatically so you don't have to have human interaction or human exposure. So again, that's a lot easier than trying to cut things apart and re-weld them. Um, cost reduction, expedited schedule, weldability, uh, and be able to, ex um, be able to allow purge and inspection of closed loop systems and can withstand transportation of shock and vibration. So that's actually a big point. In um, semiconductor equipment, we do have a lot of um, a lot of machines that are built in Silicon Valley and shipped all over the world, and everything passes leak check very well at the plant in, semi in Silicon Valley, but then by the time it gets to the customer's facility, the thing's leaking, and they're wondering, well, you know, what happened with this thing? So we're going we're gonna to review that in just a minute also. So here's the OmniSafe fitting. Um, the top fitting is the VCR fitting, not to be confused with the uh, recording equipment. VCR is vacuum compression radius. It's a, a two glands that crush into a gasket by means of the male and female nut, and it creates a high, a high purity and a high integrity seal. Um, but it also twists the two parts, and as you twist two parts, you're actually causing a bit of a wind-up, and under shock and vibration, those do loosen. The anti-torque fitting has two anti-torque components. They're identical, and they're opposing each other. As this fitting is threaded, the male and female are threaded together, the two torque eliminators lock and prevent anything except for pure compression. So, um, let's see, did I go past one there? Here's some operational temperature ranges of some different materials, and we can see uh, copper, obviously a, a lower temperature material, aluminum, nickel. This 316L V8 VAR, which is a, vac uh, which is a, uh, a purified steel, is used for most of the semiconductor applications and aerospace applications for this fitting. Inkaloy, 
Uh, HT is something that I've used before for a reactor up around 800 degrees centigrade. Has to light. Temperature, right, yeah, Fahrenheit. Oh, centigrade, right, centigrade, I'm sorry, yeah. So, um, so Hastelian is the, has the best performance as far as high temperatures, so that's one of the reasons it's considered for this uh, application. Um, this kind of shows the, uh, the tribology or the, the, what's happening at the seal formation position inside of the fitting, and there's a little bit of displacement. There's, um, if, I can't really see with this, but at this point here you can see there's, uh, there's both elastic and plastic deformation of the gasket that, that actually causes the seal. And so the plastic deformation is the U shape there. The, the elastic is the, the little part beyond, 10% beyond it, which does spring back as you release the fitting. And that elastic uh, indentation there is really the safety feature that helps us uh, keep this fitting loose, uh, keeps it tight under, under shock and vibration, thermal cycling and pressure and vacuum cycling. Here again, some of the features of a fitting which doesn't have torque in it. You don't have loosening, you don't have stored torque, you don't have particles uh, from the glands and gaskets, you don't have galling of sealing surfaces. Um, it, it produces the chromium enriched surface from electropolish. You don't end up with cross torque. And if you know what cross torque is, you, you're tightening one fitting, it causes the one next to it to loosen. You go and tighten that one, it causes one, you kind of going back and forth. So if, if you dealt with these systems, you know that there, there's a lot of frustration involved there. And if we can avoid that, that's great. In this case, we, we get rid of that completely by using torque elimination fittings. And um, we also have a problem with the standard, the standard fitting, if the gasket's missing, the two, the two uh, toroids of the two glands crush into each other, they destroy each other, and there's no way to repair that. It's gotta be taken out and thrown away. In our case, the torque eliminators uh, will stop bead to bead contact and destruction. It, it fails safe, and then it doesn't pass leak check. You take it apart, put your gasket in, and you can continue on uh, without any problems. This way. Here's a schematic of a molten salt reactor, the lifter. And again, you can see there's a lot of places to make this thing modular, places we could put in connectors in here to make it so that different parts of this, if there was a problem, could be taken out and serviced or just, re just replaced um, in the field. And so they can put the, uh, the reactor back online. This just shows some of the um, standard problems that we have with the standard fittings. As they crush together, they, I think I've explained this last time, but if you put a sandpaper in your hands and push as hard as you can, you don't do much damage, you just dent your hand. But push as hard as you can and then twist your palms, and again, you'll tear the skin off one side if you've got sandpaper there. In the, state, in the case of the standard uh, fitting, we do have the problem that as that fitting crushes and, and rotates, it is, uh, it is galling, that, like the top picture shows, and shedding particles in the process stream. And the problem isn't probably the particles for the nuclear indus industry, but it is the, the fact that the fitting has a very, very limited lifetime with all that galling. And in, a, in our case, um, this fitting can be made and broken thousands of times without any problems. In the standard fitting, it's about 15 times. You can mate and demate before it won't pass 10 to minus 9 leak check anymore. Here's the fitting. This is the, the profile of the fitting at finger tight. You can see the gasket there. The, uh, the gap between the two torque eliminators is the width of the gasket, so if the gasket's missing, the torque eliminators bottom out. So again, this shows that the fitting can survive uh, a missing gasket, and you won't have any problems uh, detecting that you have a problem and putting a gasket back in there and continuing on, no harm, no foul. This is the, um, this is the vibration shock testing that we did at Applied Materials, and in the top up there is the, um, the VCR, the standard legacy fitting. The bottom is the OmniSafe fitting with torque elimination. And here's the data. It shows that in the shock uh, vibration phase, so you've got, first you've got vibration, then you have a shock, which is where you start to see the heavy lines there. The standard fittings after the shock and then vibration, the fittings are starting to loosen and they're starting to not pass leak check anymore. And by the end of the test, the standard fittings 
two, or th two out of three are not passing the leak check any longer. In the case of OmniSafe fittings, the shock and vibration don't really cause problems because we don't have that installed torque. There's nothing that really wants to make these things loosen. So this is orbital welding. I'm trying to think what that's a picture of. Oh, it's just showing, showing the orbital weld head going around the tubing. This is the way these fittings are actually installed into an actual, um, uh, into, into the hardware when you're building a, a reactor. Here's the places where the OmniSafe fittings are now. This top view is uh, Dawn, and Dawn is between Vesta and Ceres in the asteroid belt right now. Um, then Curiosity, last time I was here, Curiosity hadn't launched yet. It was the following August. Um, but Curiosity has been up there almost two years now. The heat rejection system within that rover, uh, which is based around f moving Freon in a loop on board the rover to keep it warm, is, um, is all OmniSafe fittings. There's 40 or so OmniSafe fittings on that rover. I guess that's it. All right. You want to show your video? Oh, yeah, please. Which one first? Um, do, the, do, the, do the legacy one first. We're just going to do a quick video of this. This shows an animation of the, f of the legacy fitting, what happens when you tighten these down. Let's see if this works or not. Okay. So in this fitting, you can see that there's a rotation of the male-female knot. That they, they're actually pushing those glands in equal and opposite directions. So you can see the glands are sliding rotationally across the face of that gasket. That's what causes the galling end particles and the, and the rotation, the misalignment. And the, the, here's the galling of the, um, of the face on there. So let's go and see the OmniSafe version of this. It's similar. The, the male and female knot rotate, but, in, but there is pushing the torque eliminators forward and they're not rotating the two components. So the place to look is at that green gasket there. But you'll see there's no movement except for compression at that point. So yeah, if you can review these maybe at your, at your leisure, you can see the difference in the physics there. OK, good. Any quick questions? Yes, sir. Okay, so the, um, the Global Observer is an aircraft that's uh, used for viewing a battlefield. So that has one inch OmniSafe fittings on it. One inch is the OD of that fitting, and um, that's the biggest we've done. I think you could probably go an inch and a half, um, but you can't go to you know, three inches. It's just you're crushing such a huge uh, volume of the gasket in order to get that size bead um, embedded into the gasket. That's probably going to cause a problem. Right, that's right. So I would say probably for those systems, a flanged system would probably be better for those for the larger diameters, six inches and up. The, you know, the larger things. Yeah. Do you use these penetrators for uh, instrumentation? Do you um, um, reactor design? Yeah. So the and semiconductor industry is where the, the corrosive uh, reactors are being built right now. And so, yeah, it's, it conducts all the plumbing that comes from the um, tank farm into the facility is all done with this kind of plumbing, and then within the instrumentation within the reactor itself. Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Exactly. The, the burst pressure is a function of the tubing and the tubing thickness. That the, the fitting is not the weak part of the system. All right. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.